All righty, here we go. It is a brand new Flyers Daily, which is, uh, by the way, for the 11th of November, 2023. I remember when it was 11, 11, 11. That was 12 years ago. Anyway, Flyers Daily presented by Ticketmaster. Make more memories live. Couple of assists, bunch of assists for the Flyers as they and Penn Medicine contribute lots of pounds of food to local communities in need. Flyers and Penn Medicine teaming up for the Penn Medicine Assist. For every Flyers Assist this season, Penn Medicine and the Flyers are donating 30 pounds of food to local communities in need. They get the 6-2 win over the Anaheim Ducks. Or six, excuse me, six two. I'm I'm all off tonight. It's it's too late. Six three is the final in this game. They actually get outshot in the game, yet they double up Anaheim in goals. It's perplexing how often this happens in the NHL, but it happens once again. Flyers get outshot thirty eight to thirty six, and uh, they put up their second six spot of the season after giving up a seven spot to Anaheim thirteen days prior. Uh, they avenged that loss. And, uh, you know, this game was very interesting because so many little elements of the game are why I think the Flyers came away with the win. First of all, the first goal of the game comes off Sean Couturier stick, 457 in. But it comes about 50, 55 seconds after an unbelievable save by Sam Erson in the Flyers D zone. He makes a great save. I think it was the fourth shot of the game for Anaheim. And play goes the other way. Eventually, it ends up in the back of the net from Sean Couturier, uh, assisted by Cam Atkinson and Igor Zamula. Uh, But that play in particular, I thought, was a huge difference in the game because what it did was Sam Harrison makes a great save at one end, and then the ensuing rush at the other end results in a goal. It's like a two-goal swing. You kept one out that they should have scored, then you scored one because you kept the play going, and the Flyers get the one nothing lead. And that'll swell a goaltender with confidence. And Sam Harrison, through the rest of that first period, and Anaheim got 15 shots on him in the first, 15 more in the second. He only gave up one goal through two. Uh, I thought that that propelled him in this game to what I, I certainly believe is his best start of the year. A game he wasn't even supposed to start. Carter Hart was going to do was due back last night and due back uh, to play against this Anaheim team. But from the injury, he's all good. Uh, but he wasn't feeling well, so they held him out due to illness. Uh, we'll see if he gets the start against the Kings. But Carter Hart doesn't play. Sam Harrison does. And it's a, certainly a, a performance that he can build on uh, for uh, going forward in this season. Cam Atkinson then going to the net. Puck hits off him. Travis Sanheim shoots it there. Hits off Atkinson, goes in. Flyers go up 2 nothing. Then head to the second period with that 2 nothing lead. And Louis Belpedio. A little slippery pass from Joel Farabee to Belpedio down the right side. He beats uh, the goaltender high glove and puts the Flyers up 3-0. Then Leo Carlson gets the first of his three uh, young player. 18-year-old gets his first hat trick. Picks up his fourth goal of the season on the power play. Nice little snapshot. Beats Sam Harrison. Some traffic there. I think it's a flex off Travis Sanheim as well. And now you got a 3-1 game going into the third. But the Flyers build on it uh, at this point. Uh, Travis Sanheim has got an assist and one off the shin pad for a, a, an Anaheim goal, but at 739, what an unbelievable move and big time decision to go hard to the net uh, by Travis Sanheim. Picks up his second goal of the year, puts the Flyers up four to one. Joel Faraby and Cam York pick up the assist. Faraby all over it in this game as well. A couple of assists. Got the primary one on the Belpedio goal, gets the primary one on the Sanheim goal, driving the net when, and kind of helps Sanheim to get there as well. And uh, the Flyers go up 4 1, then at 10 34, Carlson picks up his second of the game, fifth of the season to make it 4 2. But Owen Tippett with just a, an unbelievable move as he's going down the left side, he passes it around the Anaheim defender to who? To himself. How about that? He jumps around the defender as he passes it around. <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, goes in and then beats the goaltender his third of the season. Morgan Frost uh, picks up the assist, and Leo Carlson gets his seventh on the power play and uh, also uh, picks up uh, the hat trick in this game. So Flyers take the 6-3 win. They get out of uh, they get out of uh, Anaheim with two points. They'll go back at it against the Kings, who they lost to last week, 5 to nothing. Kings have been unbelievable of late. And uh, it's a good win for the Flyers and one that uh, uh, they can be proud of uh, after losing to San Jose and San Jose getting their first win of the year. They got their second one 
uh, just a, a night ago against the Edmonton Oilers, who they're now tied in points with uh, for the 32nd, 31st and 32nd worst record in the NHL. It's hard to believe that uh, that's where Edmonton is. But uh, the Flyers, the business at hand is really simple to go into L.A. and play a really good game. And we'll see. You may see a rarity coming up in this L.A. game where you see uh, the number one goaltender, Carter Hart, play the back half of a back-to-back. Usually the backup goaltender gets the second half of the back-to-back. Maybe Carter Hart tomorrow night. So we'll see if that plays out that way uh, when they face off against the Kings. Then they're going to come home a couple of days here in Philadelphia, fly back down to Carolina, take on the Hurricanes uh, on Wednesday night, and then they'll return to Wells Fargo for Friday-Saturday games. Friday, or excuse me, Saturday-Sunday games. Saturday against the Vegas Golden Knights at 1 o'clock. And then on Sunday, uh, they'll take on the Columbus Blue Jackets at 530. So that's what's ahead for the Flyers. You know, one of the elements of this game I want to mention real quick is something, you know, Brian Smith out there on the road trip working and, uh, you know, going to practice. And one of the things the Flyers have done is they drew a big semicircle around the net to like almost increase the size of the crease and saying this is the area, small area game. This is the area where you want to go. You can only score goals from this area really tight to the net. And you saw that pay dividends in this game tonight as the first goal in the game you know the Flyers uh, Couturier working in those areas and traffic down around the net Cam Atkinson is right on the edge of the crease it hits off him and goes in Belpedio attacks right to the net and he goes from tight quarters high glove Travis Sanheim obviously power move to the net and scores it kind of reaching around uh, the Anaheim uh, Ducks goaltender oh and Tippett goes in just beats on a shot but uh, you'll take it, and and when you work on something in practice, you hope it shows itself in the game, and it showed itself immediately in the game for the Flyers, and coaches love that. So uh, we'll see if that can continue against the big heavy team in the Los Angeles Kings uh, when they uh, play the third game of this four-game road trip all said and done. But really three of the games is one clump, and they're going to come home, and then they'll go out for one, and then come back and have a couple of games at home next weekend. So Flyers get the 6-3 win over the Anaheim Ducks. Let's so try. the Flyers get the Kings tonight. Now, I mentioned the Kings have played some really good hockey of late. We saw them last Saturday. And, yeah, that was 3-4 and four for the Flyers. They were definitely a tired team in that game against the Los Angeles Kings. But they get the Kings once again tonight. And in this game tonight, you're going to get a Kings team that is seven, one, and two in their last ten games. So, what did the have the Kings done since we last saw them when they beat the Flyers five nothing on the road to go six and zero on the road at the time? Well, since then the LA Kings uh, they went to Vegas after playing the Flyers. They beat Vegas in Vegas four to one. Well, they've been stellar, unbelievable uh, on the road this season. Then they went back home, and of course, after a long road trip out of your time zone. Uh, where they go 4-0, they beat Toronto, Ottawa, Flyers, and Vegas. They go home and they lose to Pittsburgh in overtime. But anyway, uh, this team, this LA Kings team, is a very good team. Phoenix Copley got the uh, loss a- against Pittsburgh, so I imagine it's going to be Cam Talbot once again. And we'll see if it's Cam Talbot against uh, a guy that he knows very well in Carter Hart. Remember, Cam Talbot was a Flyers goaltender for a bit. God, I guess it was like three or four years ago at this point. And uh, played, I think he played maybe two games as a flyer at the end of that season when they traded for him. Uh, but Talbot wanted to be a number one goaltender. And it was clear that here it was not going to be a number one goaltender. A lot of times when a goaltender wants to be a number one goaltender, it's because he wants to get paid like a number one goaltender. And Talbot has gotten paid like a number one goaltender. So you don't begrudge a guy for that in any way, shape or form. So Flyers Kings tonight. And then uh, they'll be back home and uh, they'll go on Wednesday to take on Carolina. Look to exact a little revenge. It's kind of the revenge tour here. You get the Anaheim game where they lost to them seven to four, 13 days prior. And you get the Kings game where they lost them a week ago, five to nothing. And then you got the Carolina game. You just lost to them a little over a week ago. And the score of that game was three to two. So it's the revenge tour for the last three games of this four game road trip for the Flyers. So Flyers Kings tonight, we'll break that down tomorrow. I want to get to a couple more emails here uh, in regards to uh, something we talked about, about the rebuild, about the vocal minority the other day. I've gotten such a huge response to this that, you know, as we go through episodes here on Flyers Daily, we'll kind of dip into some of these throughout. And Fred Baudet, 
uh, has emailed me at jason.mertitus, J-A-S-O-N dot M-Y-R-T-E-T-U-S at gmail.com. You can always send me an email there or you can DM me on Twitter at Jason Mert. And he says, thanks for the latest episode. He said, my view is that the Flyers t- are a team in waiting. He said, I'm excited for the Flyers because I see the Flyers having some strong talent uh, in the minors. He said, the Flyers are waiting for their young, talented prospects. Right now, what frustrates me the most is the lack of scoring, not shots, but scoring. He said, I don't really care if the team wins or loses, but I want to see scoring. I'd rather see a 6-5 loss rather than a 2-0 loss. A loss with goals is better. (laughs) Go Flyers, signed Fred. Now, that's an interesting take, Fred. I get it. Like, goals are offense in sports are, you know, the things that make you jump out of your seat. They're exciting. I I think you guys know me. I think great goaltending is exciting. But I don't like to see the Flyers lose and not score. So this season, the Flyers, they've now scored six goals twice. They scored six goals when they beat Minnesota, that home game after they got back from that mini trip against Dallas and Vegas. They won that game six to two. Then they won the game last night against the Anaheim Ducks, six to three. They scored five against Buffalo in a five one win. And they've scored four, one, two, uh, two times. So, and they scored two goals one game and won it two to nothing. So that's just what 14 games into the season. The Flyers have scored six goals twice. Last year, in all 82 games, the Flyers scored six goals or more exactly one time. They did it once last year. That was it. It was January 5th. In a game that I believe Morgan Frost had four or five points, they won that game against Arizona January 5th, 6-2. to It was at Wells Fargo Center. That was the only time. They scored that many goals in a single game that year. So far this year, the Flyers have scored through 14 games. They have scored 44 goals. So last year, how many goals did they score uh, through their first 14 games? Now I'm going to have to be able to Google this while we do the show. I do want to be able to tell you that answer because I think it'll be interesting. So in the 22-23 season, we know that they scored 33 goals in their first 12 games last year. Then they hit a huge losing skid. And I said it just last week on the show here on the podcast that this Flyers team would score way more goals in their first 12 games than they did last year when they had that record of 7-3-2. and two. Now, last year, through their first 14 games, let me give you the record. Oh, geez, of course this thing does this to me. I don't want the Ottawa Senators. I want this. All right, here we go. There we go. So through their first 14 games a year ago, the Fly- the Flyers had a record of 7-5-2. and two. Now, the record now through 14 games for the Philadelphia Flyers is 6-7-1. and one. So not far off. Basically the same record per se. So last year, when they were 7-5-2, and two, they scored 36 goals. So 36 in their first 14 last year. This year, 46 goals. 10 more goals in that segment. F- goals four this year over last year. So far this year, they've allowed 44 goals through the first 14 games. Last year, they allowed 38 goals through the first 14 games. Now, we know that Carter Hart started out the year last year with his hair absolutely on fire. They allowed nine power play goals in the first 14 last year. This year, they've allowed uh, nine power play goals. So they're they're scratch on that. Um, Let me see how many power. So power plays that they scored on uh, last year, they scored eight power play goals in their first 14 games. This year, they've only scored four. Boy, that's an area that's just got to improve, right? But they've scored six goals on two occasions. Offense is obviously way up 10 more goals uh, than last year at this time. And the Flyers in first periods of games, you know, going back to Fred's email, he likes to see goals. Flyers in first periods of games scored two more last night. Flyers have scored 20 first period goals so far this season. The only team that has scored more first period goals are the Tampa Bay Lightning, who have scored 23. 
Flyers ahead of teams like Vancouver, who's off to a great start. The LA Kings, only 16 first period goals, four behind the Flyers. Edmonton, 15. And they're in last place in the NHL. But some good teams, you know, that they're way ahead of when it comes to first period scoring. I think ultimately the the really the the ultimate stat when it comes to period scoring is third period scoring. And the Detroit Red Wings lead that category with 24 third period goals. Vegas has got 20. The LA Kings have got 20. The Ducks are up there as well with 19 along with Carolina. You see a lot of the top teams that are getting their goals in the third period. The Flyers um, have 13 third period goals. That will put them around 19th or 20th in the NHL after all the game action completes. So uh, that's the deal. Good start, though, for the Flyers. How many years did we say, oh, my goodness, this team always in the first period gets behind in games, blah, blah, blah. Well, that hasn't been the case so far this year. Another email comes from Jeff Kirsch. Jeff says, hey, Jason, just caught up on today's pod. And on behalf of the sane Flyers fans, I feel your pain from dealing with the, quote, vocal minority said, I agree with everything you said on the pod, and my only advice to is to not even give those morons an ounce of your attention, as they don't deserve it. I realize that's easier said than done, to be sure. The pod is better than ever, and keep up the great work, Jeff. Jeff, thank you for your email. I appreciate it, and the kind words. Checks in the mail. Um, as far as giving those people a voice, look, one of the things about Flyers Daily, I never had a plan for how this podcast was going to evolve how this podcast was, you know, what, what we were going to do on it. It was kind of one of those things where you're just going to do it and feel it and see where it goes. And we got such a great reaction to this podcast right away. You're charting really high on the Apple iTunes charts globally and all of those things. And it's just doing really well. And we've kind of learned a lot over the last three years or three years and change, whatever it's been. Almost a thousand episodes were right right there now. But one of the things that I've learned and one of the things I've gotten a lot of, you know, comments about was featuring Twitter questions, tweets, emails, and those things. I want to get everybody involved. I come from a sports radio background where you get the audience involved with phone calls and all of that and emails. And I wanted to add that element in because I want you guys. Anybody that listens to this or watches this to have that element of ownership with it. This, this isn't my podcast. This is a podcast for flyer fans. I'm just the steward of it. I'm kind of the ringleader, but it's not my podcast. Yeah. It's got my name on it, whatever big deal, but it's your podcast. It's the fans podcast. And I always want to give the fans, whether I agree with them, disagree with them, um, think that they're incredibly educated or think that some of their takes are completely moronic. Everybody's got it is entitled to an opinion. Even if I think it's ridiculous, people have that opinion. And sometimes opinions that I think are ridiculous, people share with a lot of people. And I don't always claim to be right. I just have my, my view on things based on my experiences and things and people that I talk to and all those things, I have my diff my, my take on it like anybody else does. So as I'm entitled to mine, everybody else is entitled to theirs. So, you know, I always wanted this podcast to be a bit of a, a virtual round table, if that makes any sense. And the way to do that, other than us sitting in a round table, um, was to bring in emailers and tweets and those kind of things. And, it's been something that has gotten a huge response here on Flyers Daily. So uh, we'll continue to do that. But I know what you're saying, Jeff. Like, you know, sometimes you don't, you shouldn't give oxygen to idiocy. I get it. And, and uh, I've tried to kind of follow that, um, especially when dealing with social media. I, I tend to just hit that mute button now when I just don't need a certain element uh, to be exposed to in my life. But we will continue to have a great dialogue with you guys as well, because I really do appreciate it more than you can possibly, more than you can possibly imagine. All right, let's wrap up there. Uh, Flyers Kings coming up tonight, 1030, another, another late, late night, another late night game. I'll be happy when some of these are over and get back to some normal sleeping hours, but uh, we'll break down Flyers Kings tomorrow. So join us then on a Sunday edition of Flyers Daily.